When the processor reaches a function call, it's going to pause what it's doing, drop a bookmark, and jump over to the subprogram or the function definition, carry out its steps, and then finally it's going to hit a return statement inside of that function definition's body. When the return statement's encountered, some resulting value is passed back to where we left the bookmark where that function call was occurred. In this video, let's take a look at the return statement with a little bit more detail. The general form of a return statement is the return keyword followed by some expression or some value. Every function with a return type must specify at least one return statement inside of its function body. So the return type of a function is specified here after the colon and in the parameters, and the return type of this max function is a number. So this function max is saying, hey, I'm gonna give you back a number if you call me. And inside of this function, you can see that we sure enough have two return statements inside, return x and return y. The other important rule of the return statement is that the type of the return type must match the type of the expression you are returning at this return statement. So here we're saying max must return a number, and this return statement is returning the expression x, which is going to be of type number, or it's returning y in this other case that's also going to be of type number. If we had tried to return a string or a Boolean here, TypeScript would have shown us we have an error. As the processor is evaluating a function call, when it reaches any return statement in the function definition, then the call is complete. The processor is going to evaluate that expression and return it immediately back to its bookmark. If there's anything else left to do in the function, it would be ignored, skipped over, and not processed. This is always, always true. So know that when the processor reaches a return statement, that function's job is done. Let's consider the ramifications of this by modifying the max function, which we've previously used in earlier examples. Here we have a max function and notice that inside the function body block, we see that it has an if statement, but there is no else statement. We see that if A is greater than B, we return A, and then there's just this return B statement down at the very bottom. So the question is, is this still a correct implementation of max? And what happens if A is greater than B? Does this return two values? So let's try tracing through this. The first thing that happens is we reach a call to max, and let's imagine we're calling max with the arguments 10 and 5. 10 and 5 are assigned to the parameters a and b, so parameter a has a value of 10, and parameter b has a value of 5. The processor jumps to the max function after these parameters are assigned to their values, and we start with the first line of the function body, where we reach an if statement, and if a is greater than b, well a is indeed greater than b, 10 is greater than 5, so we're going to go into the then block, and we see that we reach a return statement. Given that previous rule that we just learned, we're going to stop everything this function would have otherwise done and return a back to the caller. So what happens is the value of a, which is 10, is going to be returned back to the result, and result is going to be a value of 10. Notice that even though there wasn't an else block here, because we reached a return statement, we're gonna ignore anything else that may have happened later in this function. We're not gonna do any more work. This function's job is complete. So this is still a valid implementation of the max function. Perhaps the most important rule to remember when it comes to understanding the return statement is that whenever a function is called, it can return only one value. A function definition may have multiple return statements, and we saw this with max, right? There were two return statements in that function definition. However, anytime we called max, only one value is ever gonna be returned because only one return statement is ever going to be evaluated. As soon as the first return statement is evaluated, that function's job is done. We'll see soon that a function may contain a return statement inside of a loop, and the same rule applies. As soon as the first return statement is encountered inside of a loop, no more looping is gonna happen. That function's job is done. We're gonna return whatever value is specified with the return statement right back to the caller. Nothing else is gonna happen inside of that loop or that function further. And this rule applies generally. As soon as the computer reaches any return statement in a function definition, that function call is complete. The job is done. We're going to take that value and give it back to the caller. Nothing else is going to happen inside of that function's definition, even if it otherwise would have.